Welcome to worship on Christ the King Sunday, November 26, 2023. Uh, today is the final Sunday of this church year. Um, one name has been added to the prayer list uh, since it was printed. That name is Alec Litchard. Uh, I have a number of announcements today. Uh, thanks to all who attended and participated in last week's annual congregational meeting. Uh, thanks also and congratulations to our newly elected and re-elected council members, Jill Hill, Jean Genosa, Tina Johns, Mary O'Mealy, and Larry Rissmiller. And also our council youth representative, Allison Manick, and our new endowment fund trustee, Janet Pearson. We received a card from Mary Hendershot in response to our card shower for her. I'll read that card to you right now. Thank you to all very much for calls, cards, prayers. Don't know when I'm coming back, but I get service on the phone. Listen all the time. Miss you very much. God be with you. Love, Mary Hendershot. So thank you for participating in that. Uh, Advent begins next week. We are planning a number of special things for Advent this year. Uh, you're all invited to join us in Christmas caroling on Sunday, December 10th. Our tentative schedule is to meet here about 1 o'clock, travel to do some caroling, and then return here for hot cocoa. On Sunday, December 17th, we will hold our annual Blue Christmas service at 3 o'clock for those who find the holidays difficult. And in Sunday worship in Advent, we'll be doing some unique things this year. Some of the Christmas decorating will actually be done as part of worship during the preludes. This will help us together prepare for Christ's coming in a special way. Um, Advent is a season of waiting for Christ to come, but we also proclaim that Christ is indeed already here. So this year we're gonna worship with a blend of both Advent and Christmas throughout the season, including both Advent and Christmas hymns each week. And then we have a very unique service uh, planned for December 24th uh, in the morning, uh, which will include First Communion for uh, one of our young people. Our parish administrative assistant, Annette, is still on vacation um, and will return on Tuesday. In the meantime, please contact me with any questions that you would normally contact her about. I might be able to help. Um, uh, we are, you may have noticed that we are sometimes having real bread again during communion. We, what we are doing is whenever it is the first Sunday of the month or a festival Sunday, like today, we will have um, real bread, and on the other Sundays we will have wafers. Um, what we have discovered is that, that um, we need more bread bakers. Um, we, uh, we do not have the number we had prior to, to the pandemic. So if you would be interested in baking bread from time to time, um, please speak to Kim Jennings about that. Now I have a very special announcement with some, uh, some special puppet friends. So if uh, my puppeteers can come on up. everyone. You know, I just read that the first mass-produced Christmas cards were sold in 1945. Wow, that's great. Just think we're still sending them out today in 2023? I heard that there was a man in 1975 who lived in San Francisco. His name was Warner and Earhart, and he sent out 62,824 Christmas cards. Wow, that's a load to Christmas cheer. I wonder how many people still send out cards. I mean, a lot send out those digital e-cards to their emails nowadays. Well, in 2011, the average person sent out 19 cards at Christmas time, and the report I read said that the total was expected to rise. Hey, you know, uh, speaking of Christmas cards... Oh no, don't tell me you forgot to buy some permit. You know the <laughs> holiday clock is starting to tick. No, that's not what I was going to say. Remember last year when Holly Blakesley and some of her friends and even some people from Prince of Peace wrote and sent out 9,192 cards to American soldiers? Oh yes, I remember. They set themselves a the goal of writing out 10,000 this year. Did they make it? Oh man, did they make it? 10,000? Well, this year the American soldier cards people wrote out and sent 
Drum roll, please. 13,780 cards were written out and delivered to our soldiers. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> wow, that's one awesome ministry. And that's not all. There were so many cards, they didn't all fit in Holly's car. Luckily, her husband Sam has a pickup truck, and that's how they got the cards delivered. Wow, that's so cool. So now it's time to stock up on cards for next year and beat this year's total. And don't forget, we can all help Holly out in the spring, writing out thank you and thinking of you cards for the soldiers then. Thank you, Holly. Thank you. And Holly is keeping busy. Holly has another announcement to make today. And uh, Sarah and Justine also have announcements. If you could all kind of come up forward at this point. Sarah, you're in front. Come on up. I'd like to thank everyone for their generosity for Pump. Um, sorry, I get a little emotional because my sister-in-law started it 29 years ago. But anyway, um, I want to thank you all for your generosity. And I talked to Stella Nelson, and the need now is cereal and pasta. So if we could concentrate on that. Plus, you can donate whatever you'd like. There's you know, needs for other things. But I just wanted to say that we heard last week at the congregational meeting how Prince of Peace, when we purchase the Weiss cards, Prince of Peace, our church, gets 5%. So I'm thinking, take those Weiss cards, you purchase, Prince of Peace gets 5%, purchase things for pump, and the pump clients get food, so it's a win-win for everybody. Thank you, Sarah. Good morning. Um, I am Justine Saviet now. I just got married in June. And if you don't know me, I'm the parish nurse. We did uh, meet with the Health and Wellness Committee a couple weeks ago. And we came together with some tips for staying healthy this winter and made it into a packet. So I'll have them in the narthex uh, after church. If you have any questions, my uh, contact information is on here. Um, we all went through COVID and all of the precautions that we took and we're very proud that we didn't have any COVID outbreaks within the church. So we just want to continue that trend and stay healthy. Um, it just takes little, little things along the way that um, everybody can do to just stay healthy in this winter. So uh, respiratory illness packet will be in the narthex after Christmas, after Christmas, after service. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I need it a minute because that uh, 13,000, thank you for your help. Um, I just wanted to say the gift tags for Pump are out there. If you have any questions, let me know, or Mary or Sherry. Each kid, 43 kids, has three tags each. If you want to do a whole child, take the three tags with the same number, but you don't have to do a whole child. You can do individual tags, and they're due back by the 17th. Okay. Thank you. Um, and finally, uh, Larry Rissmiller let me know that he is uh, in the process right now of refreshing the prayer chain, uh, which we had uh, uh, some years in the past. That's um, a group of people who will call one another um, down a chain um, when someone is in special need of prayer. So if you would like to be part of that prayer chain, um, please speak to Larry about that. If there are no other announcements I neglected to make today, then uh, the time has come to worship the Lord. Let us quiet our voices and our hearts.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming, open our eyes to your see you and our neighbor, open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the young and young at heart to come forward for story time. Why is this here? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Good morning. Today's a special day in the church here. Did anybody catch what today is called in the church here? Anybody out there catch it? Christ the King. Christ the King. Christ the king. Did you know that Jesus is a king? Yeah. Well, Jesus once told a story about what it would be like when he came back as king. Can you help me tell this story? All right, so who... Uh, Oh, I know. Jesus said, when the Son of Man, that's himself, when the Son of Man comes in glory with all of his angels, he'll sit on his royal throne. What do you think this is? His, his royal throne. So who's going to be the Son of Man sitting on the royal throne? I saw you first. You can be up there. All right. Now all the people of all the nations will be brought before him, and he'll separate them as shepherds separate sheep from goats. So I need some of you to sit over there. So separate them. Say sheep over there. Say sheep over there. Sheep over there. And say goats over there. Goats over there. Okay, so goats, goats, oh sorry. Goats sit down there. And then the king will say to those on his right, my father has blessed you. Come and receive the kingdom that was prepared for you from when the world was created. Because when I was hungry, you fed me. And when I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. When I was naked, you gave me clothing. When I was sick, you helped me. And when I was in jail, you visited me. And all of them will say to the king, Huh? Say that. When did we do all this? And then he'll say, Whenever you did it for any of my people, no matter how unimportant they seemed, you did it for me. Well, then the, the king will say to those on his left, Get away from me. You're under God's curse. I was hungry and you didn't feed me. You di I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger and you didn't welcome me. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and you didn't help me. And then they'll say to him, Huh? Huh? When did we fail to do these things? And he'll say, Whenever you failed to do it for any of my people, no matter how unimportant they seemed, you failed to do it for me. And Jesus said that the goats would then go into punishment and the sheep would go into eternal life. Now don't worry, I would like you to go over there. Because don't worry, we are all, in fact you can go over there too, because you're really not the son of man. Neither am I. Yeah, come on over here. We're all sheep. Which is good. But what does that mean we should do? What does that mean we should do? Be kind. To who? To God. Everybody. To God and everybody, yes. And to me too, yeah, sure, to me. What's another thing we should do? Bye. We should go bye. Yeah, well, sometimes. Absolutely, absolutely. What? And help people up if they fall. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, thank you for your help today. Let's have a prayer. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for making him our king. Thank you for making him our king. Help us always help one another. Help us always help one another. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thanks. You can go back to your seats. Okay. <laughs> A reading from Ezekiel. Because Israel's kings proved to be bad shepherds, Ezekiel declared that the Lord will assume the role of shepherd in Israel. The Lord will also set over them a shepherd Messiah, my servant David, who will feed and care for the people. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. 
I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on the rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between the sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be ruler among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Thanks be the word of the Lord. Thank you. Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with songs. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. A reading from Ephesians. In this passage, God is praised for revealing ultimate divine power in raising Jesus from the dead. The resurrected, exalted Christ is Lord of both the church and the entire universe now and in the age to come. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, and for this reason, I do not cease in give, to give thanks to you, for as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of your Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know God, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which God has called you, what are the riches of God's glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of God's power for us who believe, according to the working of God's great power. God put his power to work in Christ when God raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of power in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And God has put all things under the feet of Christ and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is the body of Christ, the fullness of the one who fills all in all, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the angels will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats he will put at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the dominion prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. 
Well, then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and the devil's angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Well then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. I wasn't talking about anyone who's really sitting over here. Or over here for that matter. <laughs> Jody was upset. Why did I come here today, she wondered. I thought this would help, and now I feel even worse than when I started. Jody was sitting in church, and the service was just ending. The people around her started to put their hymnals back in the pew racks and began to chat with one another. Jody didn't know any of them. She shook her head sadly, preparing to go home. From behind her, Jody felt a gentle tap on her shoulder. She turned and a woman with a broad smile stood there. Good morning, she said. My name's Carla. Would you like to join me for coffee in the social hall today? Jody thought for a second. I suppose I might as well, she thought. She smiled and nodded. Carla said, great, follow me. Carla led her down the steps into the social hall. Jody poured herself a cup of coffee and picked up a small piece of cake. She sat down at a table with Carla, who was dipping a tea bag in a cup of hot water. I'm so glad you joined us for worship today, Carla said, and I'm glad you stayed afterward to chat. I don't think I've seen you here before. I haven't been here before, Jody said. It's probably been 15 years since I was at any church, but since, well, in the past few months, I just thought maybe I should come back. Carla nodded. Well, how was it? Did you find what you were looking for? Jody laughed a little. Well, I don't know. I think I'm looking for forgiveness or something. Did you find it? asked Carla. Jody paused and said, No, if anything, I feel worse. Oh, no, Carla said. I'm sorry to hear that. Tell me more. Jody said, It was the gospel reading today, that story about the sheep and the goats. I'm definitely not one of the sheep. I've done, well, I've done some things I'm not proud of. I'm definitely a goat. And I don't want to end up... She paused. There was a tear welling up in her left eye. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. She looked down and held her coffee cup with both hands. Of course, Carla said kindly. I can understand how you heard the gospel reading that way. May I tell you how I heard it? Jody nodded as she sipped her coffee. Carla continued, When I was younger, I was convinced that I wasn't good enough. I was always so worried about messing up. I came to church every week, still do, but readings like this always upset me. That's it. I'm going to hell. Pardon my language. I was convinced that God was angry at me, that God just wanted to punish me. So I kept coming, kept coming, hoping to find out how to get better, and then I finally heard it. I finally heard the whole story. And I noticed that even though there were individual stories like this that were scary, the bigger story of the Bible is a story of love and hope and forgiveness. Have you ever heard of God's grace, Jody? I think so, Jody said quietly. Well, grace means that God's love is freely given to us, no matter what we do, no matter what we've done, no matter who we are. We don't have to do anything to earn it. In fact, we can't. Jesus has already done it. Well, I'm confused, Jody said. That doesn't sound at all like the reading today. 
I know, Carla said. She was smiling. I know, it's so weird. Some parts of the Bible just don't seem like they belong in the Bible. But I think of it like, like baking soda in chocolate chip cookies. Would you eat baking soda by itself? Jody laughed. Ew, I tried that once when I was eight. It was nasty. Right, Carla said, but you need to mix it in with the dough to make the cookies good. It's important, it's necessary, but it's not what the flavor of the whole cookie is. She took a sip of her tea and continued. That's what stories like this are like. They don't tell us the overall picture of God's grace, but they tell us some really important things that are mixed in. Whenever I hear a story like this that sounds like God is condemning me, I remind myself, ooh, this must be baking soda. Jody nodded. Okay, I, I think I follow you, so, so what does this story mean? Carla said, well, I might be wrong, but here's how I hear it. I think the key is in how surprised everybody was. Did you notice that both the sheep and the goats were surprised that they were there? Neither of them had any idea that the way they treated people was connected to Jesus at all. They just did it. The sheep treated people well, well, I guess because they thought it was the right thing to do. And the goats, well, they treated people poorly, I guess because they were selfish and self-centered and couldn't see beyond themselves. And I think the message Jesus wanted to give us in this story is that other people are important. The way we treat them is important. And it's important that we treat everyone like this. That's why he said, the least of these. I think the least of these means people who are beaten up and underprivileged. Jody said, I heard someone say once that your character is how you act when you think nobody is watching. Carla laughed. Yes, that's a good way to put it. The point here is that the way we treat others, whoever they are, matters to God. The way we treat others is the way we treat God. We have to treat everybody right, care for everybody, no matter who they are. Jody paused to let this sink in. But what if we don't? What if we're sometimes cruel and thoughtless? Carla looked closely at Jody and said, I've been cruel and thoughtless sometimes, and I've gotten so stuck in spirals of guilt when that happens. But I'm learning instead to ask God for forgiveness, and he forgives me every single time. And this story helps remind me that being a disciple of Jesus isn't just about me. In fact, Jesus forgiving me is just the beginning. This story reminds me that once I've received this forgiveness, it frees me up from worrying about myself so I can help others. And that's the whole point. A wise woman once told me, what are we here for if not to make life easier for one another? I think she was right. Well, Jody said, I feel like you know me, that you know what it's like to feel this guilt. Do you really think I can be forgiven? Do you really think I can do good things? Carla took both of her hands and said, Yes, no question. No question at all. I bet you're already doing lots of good things and just not noticing it because you're so worried about it. I think you can learn to let go of worrying about that and live now. I know you can because I did it. Jody pulled one of her hands back to wipe the tears from her eye. That sounds hard. Do you, do you think I could talk to you again next week? Carla smiled and said, of course. I'll be here. Can I give you a hug? Jody nodded. The two women hugged, hugged, and Jody waved goodbye and left. So I wanted to do two things in this story today. First, I wanted to share with you a way of looking at this gospel reading that is filled with hope and encouragement. And second, I also wanted to share with you a glimpse of the kind of conversations that can happen through the Sharing Our Hope booklet that I told you about last week. This booklet that I'm making right now will be a list of difficult things that we sometimes deal with, along with the names of people whom we can talk to about them. Like, if you are struggling with such and such, you can talk to so-and-so. And those so-and-so people will be some of you. For instance, Carla in that story might appear in our Sharing Our Hope booklet like this. If you're struggling with guilt, you can talk to Carla. Not because Carla was a trained expert, but because she had struggled with guilt so much in her past and was now comfortable talking about it. And because of that, she was able to help Jody. 
And I think both of them found their conversation to be meaningful and healing. The Sharing Our Hope booklet can help these conversations to happen here. And so today, I invite you to be part of it. In your pews, at either end, there are slips of paper you can fill out. I invite you today to fill out one of those slips and get it to me. Or you can just leave it in the pew and I'll pick it up afterwards. I'll also be emailing a link with another way to sign up. So if you're on my email list, you'll get that link in the next day or two. Two things to remember. One, these are not confidential. If you choose to share this, you're choosing to make it public. And secondly, I don't want anybody to feel pressured to sign up. Please only sign up for this if you're comfortable doing so. My hope is to print this booklet in a few weeks and have it available for members and visitors to read and maybe even have a conversation like the one Carla and Jody had. As Carla said, what are we here for if not to make life easier for one another? <coughs> Amen.
seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all of the world. Holy God, through Christ we have Prince of Peace, along with Trinity and Banner, here in Acto, you are called to feed, flow, and welcome all in your name. Direct your church worldwide to respond to this call with a strong faithfulness and with generous love. We pray for the work of the LCA, World Hunger, and partnerships with global feeding ministries. Hear up, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In Christ, who is the rock of our salvation? We are brought into union with all creation, great and small, with mountains, seas, dry lands, and animals of the field. We seek your guidance and protection. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Christ we know mirth, merciful judgment. We ask that you guide rulers of every nation in ways of humble leadership and wise decision making. Allow me to come to all those in need, in war, ravaged countries, and those who are in life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Christ we are made to keep the love as a pastor, inspire the outreach and social ministries of our congregation. Let us continue to help you be the help in the helpers. Fun, Bloom, Slave Family Network, Safe Harbor, and Pop Treasures. To a name with you. Let us reach out to find others as well. We pray for all those who serve and attend to the needs of others. Hear us with us. Your mercy is great. In Christ we feel the depth of your love, your care, your abundant grace for us. Nourish all who hunger, connect with you, and he who are isolated, surround all who are experiencing rejection, fear, or abuse. Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering, including John, John, Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer David, 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 Jeanine, Jeanine Linda, Linda, Peggy, Peggy, Dawn, Dawn, Janice, Janice, Tim. Them. Bob, Bob, Yvonne, Yvonne, Jill, Jill, and family and friends of Dave, Dave, Mildred, Mildred, John, John, Joyce, Joyce, Mary, Mary, Cider, Cider, and Al. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In Christ we see in the glory of God who loves celebration and joy. We pray that those who, with birthdays this week experience your joy as they celebrate with friends. We wish them all a blessed day and pray that they are well. Happy birthday, Marvin Stana, Sherwood Jones, Robert Gist, Stephanie Shoemaker, Joseph Daly, and Mark Matura. Hear us, O oh God. May your mercy is great. In Christ, we have now entered the holiday season. We will soon observe the Advent, waiting to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Let us not get lost in the worldly desires and pursuits, no matter how busy life makes us. Let us remember the real reason we celebrate. Help us stop and marvel at the birth of your son, what it means for the world, just as shepherds and wise men did long ago. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also share with one another a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that we, as we gather with these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for, all, for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, who enthroned forever at your right hand, intercedes for us as our great high priest. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, surrounded by evil and bordered by death, we appeal to you, our sovereign, our wisdom, and our judge. We praise you for Christ who proclaimed your reign of peace and promised an end to injustice and harm. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore the sacrifice of his life and death and the victory of his resurrection, we await with all the saints his loving redemption of our suffering world, and we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your spirit on these gifts of bread and wine and on all who share in the body and blood of your Son. Teach us your mercy and justice and make all things new in Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. Thank you.
Jesus, in this simple meal you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, Sovereign Son, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.